After years of being a solid choice for beginner sim racing, Logitech is out swinging with the new Direct Drive Pro Racing Wheel and Load Cell Pro Racing Pedals. Taking years of feedback and embracing the fact that Pro and other hardcore drivers really want a modular design, the Pro Racing Wheel and pedals from Logitech are packed with features, but do come at the Pro level price of $1,000 for the wheel and $350 for the pedals. And I've been having a blast checking out this setup, so let's dive in and take a close look at the Logitech Pro Racing Wheel and the Pro Racing pedals. Hey everyone, I'm Jordan with 9to5toys and I've been really enjoying my time with these new Logitech Pro Racing products. So first off, we're gonna dive in and take a close look at the wheel and then we'll take a look at the pedals and these do come separately so you can purchase one or the other or both. The most notable upgrade for the Pro Racing wheel and why it's so expensive is that the force feedback is a direct drive system. That means that instead of like the G923, which uses gears for force feedback, the wheel is directly mounted to a motor, which gives a much smoother feedback and a lot more power. For comparison on the power, the G923, which I recently compared to the Thrustmaster T300 RS GT, you can check out that video up here, that can put out about 2.3 Newton meters of torque, you know, how much kind of uh, force it can put back in the wheel when you are turning. This new Pro wheel can go up to 11 Newton meters of torque, so, uh, that is just a huge number there. And Logitech mentioned, you know, in a lot of their research, most pro users and, you know, hardcore users are only using about five Newton meters of torque. So that's where it comes preset. And that's kind of a happy place as well. And another benefit of that is that the old G923 was notoriously very loud. Once again, check out that video where I kind of point that out. Uh, but the new Pro Wheel, even though it's so much more powerful, it is extremely quiet. You really can't hear it in operation at all. All right, and so with the kind of basics out of the way, let's take a look at the Pro Wheel base. And we'll take the wheel off here, talk about that in a minute. But the base itself, you know, the first thing that I noticed getting out of the box is just the sheer weight and mass of it. At seven kilograms or 15 and a half pounds, it's a formidable piece of hardware. But otherwise, the rest of the design has a nice modern shape to it. On the front behind the quick release wheel are two buttons. One turns the wheel on and off and the other calls up the OLED screen. This OLED screen is pretty crucial because there are two different versions of the wheel available. Both work on PC, but one is for Xbox and one for PlayStation. PC users have access to the Logitech G Hub to tweak any settings and set up different profiles, but console users can use the onboard screen to adjust the force feedback, true force, and even brake pedal pressure when the Pro pedals are installed. Settings can be changed with the controls of the wheel, and profiles can also be stored to quickly swap between different games or, you know, between different users. Another thing to note here, some direct drive wheels can, you know, infinitely rotate. There's no, like, hard stops. On the Logitech Pro Racing wheel, it does have 1,080 degrees of rotation, but then it does have a hard stop there. And Logitech attributes this to their, you know, being some extra wires that are internally kind of moving around in there for their true force system that would kind of get in the way if there was an infinite rotation. So that's why they say that, you know, they didn't go with that kind of a setup. And Logitech has changed it up with the way that cables are routed and connected as well. On the back are three USB-A ports for plugging in the pedals and hopefully some other accessories. You also have a power port and a micro USB port to connect it to a computer or console. I'm not really sure why Logitech is going with micro USB, you know, in 2022, but unfortunately the cable that plugs into the wheelbase and then also the cable that plugs into the pedals, those are both micro USB. All right, and quickly talking about mounting out of the box, there are two different ways to mount it. Logitech has updated the desk mounting hardware with a simple but very effective removable clamp. So yes, it can be used on a desk, but to really take advantage of that power that the wheel is capable of, a stronger option would probably be preferred. I tried it on my FlexiSpot desk and it worked, but then I got a Next Level Racing Wheel Stand 2.0 to use with the Logitech Pro Wheel, and this is a much more solid option. I also looked at the GT Lite, but with the power that the wheel is capable of, my contact at Next Level Racing didn't recommend that cockpit for a direct drive system that is this powerful. So if you have a dedicated cockpit or a stand, the clamp is easily removable and there is a little plug that will go in its place to keep the design nice and sleek. And then there are three threaded holes that Logitech claims will work on a variety of the most popular cockpit and mounting options out there. Two of the holes lined up perfectly for the wheel stand 2.0. And we'll do a separate video, a deep dive into the wheel stand 2.0. I'm really enjoying it so far, but for this video, we're gonna focus just on these Logitech products. 
All right, and bringing back the wheel, let's talk a little bit about that. You can see that they went with kind of the D style wheel where there is a flat spot at the bottom here, but the rest of it is wrapped in a nice soft leather that really feels good in use. Otherwise, the wheel has controls placed nicely within reach. There are two dials with pressable buttons, a D-pad like thumbstick, and 10 additional buttons. The gear shift paddles are magnetic with a very satisfying movement when actuated. These use contactless Hall effect sensors and tactile magnets. And together, this should mean that the durability will be great on these shift paddles, but of course, you know, the jury is still out there. Under the shift paddles are additional dual clutch pedals. They can be mapped to other functions, but out of the box, they are meant as a dual clutch setup for faster starts off the line. And of course, this is also a quick release system, so the wheel is very easy to take on and off, which begs the question, are, are there other wheels? Well, Logitech, when questioned in our kind of media pre-release events, you know, they said basically no comment or we can't comment on that at this time. So it really sounds like there should be some other stuff, you know, coming down the line that would maybe switch up the wheel that's available on here. Now, this is something that Thrustmaster has done with their lineup. They have a ton of different wheels available and even some different pedal systems. So it would be cool to see some different varieties and styles of wheels available from Logitech, but we'll just have to wait and see. And on that same subject, you know, as far as other accessories here, the G923 has a shifter, but it has a different connector. It doesn't have the USB-A connector. So will there be a shifter or maybe a handbrake, which are other, you know, kind of pro accessories that a lot of people would look for? While they aren't available quite yet, you know, once again, they said uh, no comment. So it kind of sounds like that stuff should be coming down the line as well. And Logitech is also putting their true force system uh, kind of ecosystem on the pro racing wheel as well. Now, true force kind of took some flack on the G923. It's just kind of like a marketing gimmick, but the technology is kind of neat. In cooperation with developers, in theory, true force should provide some additional detail through the wheel for a more realistic driving experience. Now, currently, not every title, not every racing title is supported with True Force. So that's one reason why, you know, maybe it hasn't really caught on as much. But Logitech is committed to, I think, expanding the usability of True Force through other titles and with other developers. On the pro racing wheel, True Force can easily be adjusted up and down to your liking. When all the way down, the wheel feels smooth, but dialing it up adds a significant amount of fine vibrations that can help to signal what is happening with the car. In my experience, it does give a more of a realistic experience. You know, when I'm driving my car, I usually feel some vibrations through my 2005 uh, Golf. And so having some, you know, similar sensations in this wheel by turning that up actually, to me, feels a little bit more realistic. I usually don't run it at 100%, you know, feeling everything. I usually have it around like 40 or 50% to get some, a little bit more vibration in the wheel, just makes it feel a little bit more realistic. All right, and now let's move over to the pedals. Now, as we mentioned, these are sold separately for $350, which really is right in line with a lot of other, you know, pro kind of uh, pedal setups. From working with other pro and hardcore sim racers and paying close attention to the community, Logitech really wanted to support, you know, as much modularity as possible. So moving the pedal around on this base, easily mounting it to uh, racing stands or cockpits, even removing these units altogether and then mounting them on a different racing rig or mounting them inverted, you know, whatever you want to do, you should be able to do with these pedals. And at its core is the brake pedal, which is a load cell brake pedal. And typically this gives a more realistic braking experience because it works on the pressure that is applied and not necessarily the distance that the pedal travels. So this method means that the brake force can be tweaked on the fly, even from the wheel or from the G-Hub app. And it can go all the way up to 100 kilograms of force. Uh, which is just insane to me. I guess I don't know what a true race car is, you know, to lock up the pedal, but that is just insane. Uh, I typically found myself leaving it around 25 kilograms of force. So that felt like a good amount where, you know, I had to work to, you know, get it to where I wanted it to be, but it was something that my body could get used to. And that's where this kind of pedal really, you know, shines is in the consistency because it's more of like muscle memory as to how much force you're putting down on there. And besides being able to adjust that pressure on here, uh, Logitech also includes a few different accessories for changing the distance of the brake pedal. There's some different stoppers in there that will kind of shorten it up and there or also make it a little bit longer if you want more travel. And then you can also change the strength of the springs for the gas and clutch pedal. And I'm not really sure, you know, how difficult it is to do on some other setups, but Logitech has made it extremely easy on here. I can show you basically 
how it works. Uh, the bottom of like this little attachment here, you know, where the actual spring is, isn't necessarily attached to anything. It's just the pressure holding it in place. So if you just compress the spring a little bit, you can pull it out. You can take this little piece off and then you can swap out the spring like that. You know, it's that simple. And they are all color coded. Um, you can see on the top of the spring, like there's a little red color up here. And in the manual is a little guide that tells you, you know, what different forces the different colors of springs, you know, are, need to apply to actually press that spring down. So you can dial them into, you know, whatever you want. Like I put a little bit more pressure on the gas pedal so it doesn't feel as light. So it feels like I'm a little bit more consistent with it, um, but you can change it up however you want. I'm still pretty new to <laughs> sim racing. I've only been doing it for the last few months, but I'm really enjoying it. And from a lot of my research and, you know, trying to figure out how to get faster, most pros and, you know, experienced racers will tell you that braking is one of the most important areas that you will actually gain time and become a little bit faster. So having a setup that you can trust and that you can get used to and be very consistent um, is, is really going to help your times. And that really was one of the big reasons why I went with the Logitech G923 over the Thrustmaster T300 RS GT, which I got quite a bit of flack for because, I mean, the Thrustmaster, that is a great setup, but basically it came down to like the pedals that come with the uh, T300 RS GT weren't that great in my opinion. They didn't feel great for me where I thought that the Logitech pedals felt a lot better. Now, obviously Thrustmaster is a lot more modular and you can, you know, swap that out and put some of their different pedals in there. But then if you're spending, you know, hundreds of more dollars swapping out different components, you know, why would you not just kind of like upgrade to like the direct drive system instead? So that's kind of why I went with the Logitech as kind of uh, the winner for that comparison between those two. So uh, short story long, uh, braking is really important and I think brake feel is really important. And I really do like how the Logitech pro racing pedals feel and I like all the modularity there. And one other note on the pedals as far as, you know, mounting or using them on the ground or carpet, uh, here in my office where I was using them mainly, we have carpet and on the G923, they had that awesome little uh, spiky bar that kept the pedals pretty secure on carpet. Uh, unfortunately, with the Pro Pedals, that was not the case. They do have pads, which might help on, you know, like some hard surfaces, but for carpet, I found it sliding a lot. I had to kind of brace it, but then ultimately mounting it in my cockpit was uh, the best place to put this as it is rock solid in there. Looking inside of the Logitech G-Hub, there are multiple tabs for tweaking the wheel and pedals. On the right is a visual representation of the wheel and its current orientation. The first tab contains assignments that can enable many different commands, keys, actions, macros, and system tools to be bound to the buttons on the wheel. Next up under the steering wheel tab are controls for sensitivity, operating range, dampener, strength, and force feedback filter. And there's also a toggle for an auto force feedback filter. And then lastly is the control for the true force audio effects. The dual clutch pedals can also be tweaked here with options for gas, brake, handbrake, and more options. The pedal tab has controls for clutch sensitivity, brake sensitivity, accelerator sensitivity, and brake force with a handy visualization of the pedal on the right. Adjusting the sensitivities change the input curve. So at a low sensitivity, most of the input is registered when the pedal is nearly fully pressed. While at a high sensitivity, it's the opposite, and a slight press will give bigger input with it tapering off towards the end. Lastly is the light sync panel with the ability to change the rev light effect direction and brightness. All right, so actually in use, the Logitech Pro Racing Wheel and Pedals have been an absolute blast to play with. The smoothness and responsiveness have been a welcomed improvement over the G923 that I have been using for the last few months. While just practicing in general will make you a faster driver, I have been setting new personal records with the Logitech Pro Racing Wheel and Pedals, which just feels great. I also feel like I make fewer mistakes because I have a better idea of what the car is doing, and I can dial it into my you know exact desires for racing. And at the end of the day, I just want to keep playing because the combination is such a fun setup. I played mainly a Seto Corsa competition for my testing and they play together very well because that supports Logitech's true force system. I also tried drifting in Assetto Corsa but I'll have to come back to that after some practice. I mean a lot of practice but I am determined to learn how to drift so if you have any good tips or you know people to look for for guides and teaching link those down in the comments because I really want to learn how to drift on this wheel. So while there are cheaper direct drive systems out there, there have been some nice budget options popping 
popping up on the market lately. Uh, for me, the Logitech really has been a great wheel. You know, the design, it's still able to mount on your desk if you want, but better mounted in a cockpit. The ability to change all the settings directly on the screen here or connect it to the Logitech G Hub, which is a very seamless UI and makes it really easy to change everything is really great. The wheel feels good to me. I would still love to see some other wheel options on there and hopefully we start to see that from Logitech. And other reviewers will be able to, you know, directly compare this with real life experience with like Fanatec direct drive systems. Uh, but for me personally, kind of my first uh, actual experience with a direct drive system, this has just been an incredible experience. But that doesn't change the fact that this is a lot of money for the setup. So if you are just getting into sim racing, uh, I would definitely recommend getting a cheaper wheel, you know, if you can find something used, like a G923, and check that out for a while and see if it's something that you're really interested in, and then you can decide, you know, if, do I wanna sell that and get something that's more powerful? That's probably the best way to go if you've never really ventured into sim racing uh, at all, because that's quite a bit of money if you don't wanna put the time into it. But for those who are looking to take it to the next level, and with, you know, the name Logitech and kind of their history of durability, which for me has been really good, uh, this is a really exciting product that uh, I'm hoping to see is just the beginning of more sim racing products from Logitech. You know, at the end of the day, when it all comes down to it, having this setup just makes me want to go sim race more, which is, you know, exactly what you would want. All right, and that's going to do it for our review of the Logitech Pro Racing Wheel and Pro Racing Pedals. Let us know what you think about them down in the comments below. And if you're looking for some other videos to watch, I will link to our comparison of the G923 and the Thrustmaster T300 RS GT, as well as our most recent video. And thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. This is Jordan with 9to5toys.